shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the shadow, Cranston is gifted with hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's story, The Isle of the Living Dead. Margot, Lamont, and Margot's aunt are on a cruise of the West Indies. It is early evening as their ship sails into the harbor of the little island of St. Jude. In spite of the thunderstorm that is in progress, Margot insists that they go ashore. Her aunt refuses. So only Lamont accompanies her as they walk down the ship's gangplank to a waiting lock. But Lamont, you told me yourself that these tropical storms never last long. But this is the rainy season, Margot. Oh. Look out. One more slip and you'll swim to St. Jude. Well, I don't see why they don't put escalators on these gang planks. After all, they have them at the best apartment stores. Mm, but the best apartment stores don't float. Yeah? Yeah. Let me help you into the launch. There we are. All right, pilot. Yes, sir. Out of your line. Well, let's go into the pilot's cabin. Get out of the train. All right. Go ahead, Margo. Thanks. That's it. Good evening. Kind of a rough night for you, isn't it, pilot? Maybe. Well, we'll get to shore all right, won't we? Maybe. Hmm, jolly fellow. <laughs> Are you a native of St. Jude? Yes. Well, it certainly looks like a beautiful place. You think so? Well, I... Uh, yes. Hmm? You have been here before? Uh, no, we haven't. Then wait and see before you talk. He must be a big help to the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with the island, pilot? One half of island good. Other half belong to devil. What do you mean? Look through window. You see big hill over there? Oh, yes. I can just barely make it out. That plantation belonged to devil lady. Mrs. Nesbitt. Devil lady? Yes. No one go near her place. Why not? You ever hear of zombie? Zombies? Uh, zombies, Margot, are supposed to be dead men here in the tropics who walk about with no mind or soul. Native superstition. Uh, what about these zombies, Violet? Are there supposed to be zombies on the plantation? Well, answer me. Now talk to Pilot when he steer boat. He must have read that on a streetcar someplace. Come on, Lamont, let's go out on deck. Yes. Yes, all right. What do you suppose he meant, Lamont? About the island? Hmm. I don't know. Say, hey, isn't that the young girl that played bridge with us on the boat? Where? That's sitting back there in the stern. Yes, of course. Betty Fulton. Lamont, she's crying. I wonder what the trouble is. Well, let's find out. <laughs> hello there. <laughs> oh, hello, Margot. Lamont. Oh, anything wrong, Betty? No. No, that is... <laughs> I'm leaving the ship. Why, Betty? I'm going to the island to look for my fiancé, David Belmont. Well, that shouldn't be an occasion for sadness. I'm afraid that something's happened to him. That's why I'm here. That's why I've come to this sinister, terrifying island. No, no, Betty. <laughs> How do you know that something's happened to him? Well, six months ago, he went to New York to find work. I heard from him regularly. And then one day, I received a letter telling me that he secured a job on the island of St. Jude. And what kind of a job? Something to do with a sugar plantation. Sugar plantation? Lamont, isn't that the place that Well, I... uh, there must be more than one sugar plantation, Margot. Uh, what happened next, Betty? I never heard from him again. I wrote to the steamship company and learned that he had definitely come to St. Jude, so... I came to New York and booked passage on the first ship. But, Betty, there might have been a mix-up in the mails oh, or any no, number of... No, no. I've heard too many strange things about the island of St. Jude. 
Now that I'm here and I feel the mystery of this talk tonight, I'm sure something has happened to David. Come on, listen. <laughs> what is it? It's probably a native celebration. Why, of course. Look up down the hill. See that faint line of lights bobbing along? Lamont, that's on the plantations the pilot told us about. Come on, Margo. We'll ask the pilot what all this means. Oh, Lamont, do you suppose it can be zombies? I don't suppose anything, yes. Pilot? Uh, uh, pilot, those lights moving along that hillside, what are they? Lights? Yes. And what are those drums we're hearing? I hear no drums. No drums, but... I see no light. Now, wait a minute. Are those zombies? Are they? Ask Jandi. He know. Jandi know everything. He say drum means death. Jandi? Well, who is Jandi? Well, we'll never learn from this one. Come on. Margo, did you find out what those lights are? No, Betty. Oh. <laughs> now you know what I mean about the island. It's taken David from me. Betty, Margo and I have a day and a half to spend on this island. If it leaves your mind, we'll help you look for David. And believe me, we won't give up until he's found. Lamont, perhaps we should have gotten one of the natives to guard us to the Nesbitt plantation. I couldn't find anyone who'd take the job. All oh, full of superstitious fear. Won't go near the Nesbitt place. I even had trouble hiring these saddle horses to make this trip tonight. Has Mrs. Nesbitt the only plantation on the island? Uh, no, Betty. There's one other. If we don't find David tonight, we'll visit there in the morning. Oh, well, look. Look ahead there. Isn't that someone standing in the road? Yes. Perhaps he can tell us the way. Get up. Get up there. Come on, we'll talk to him. This little speed job I'm riding. Certainly must miss the old milk wagon. <laughs> I say there. I, uh, wonder if you can help us. We are looking for the Nesbitt plantation. Nesbitt? Yes. Nesbitt plantation? Yes, yes. Keep away! Hey, come back here! Come back! He ran into the underbrush. Did you see his face, Lamont? That weird, half-dark face. Yes. Do you suppose he... You suppose he was a zombie? No, please, both of you. Let's not have any more talk about zombies. It's... The drum. The same drum. Oh, oh David. David. Look, over there through the trees. There's a light. The the plantation. Well, I hope so. Come on. Get up, boy. Come on. Lamont. Yes, Margo. While you were hiring the horses, I asked one of the natives about the zombies and the drums. Yes? Well, he told me that when the tom-toms played... That meant that another body has risen from its grave to wander about the nest of plantation. Oh, of course, that's a native superstition. Yeah, I wonder. Look, there's a house right there. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. Oh, we better leave the horses here. Yeah. Where will we find him? Will he be here? Now, Betty, David's all right. We'll find him. A grim-looking place, isn't it? Here, we'll tie the horses to this tree. There we are. It looks like the front door right over there, Lamont. Good. Well, let's see what happens. Well, Lamont, I don't like any part of this business. Quiet here. It's almost like, it's a, like a graveyard. Isn't that what you meant to say? Well, no, no, it is. It is like a graveyard. Maybe David's graveyard. I, uh, I better knock again. Maybe they just don't Quiet, want... Martha. Oh, good evening. We'd like to see Mrs. Nesbitt, please. Yes? Uh, are you Mrs. Nesbitt? Yes, I am. Won't you come in? Well, thank you. Uh, this is Miss Lane, Miss Fulton, and I'm Lamont Clinton. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I'm happy to meet all of you. Won't you come in the study? Well, thank you very much. Lamont, she isn't at all like Margo. <laughs> I'm not at all as the natives told you I'd be. Wasn't that what you were going to say, Miss Lane? <laughs> yes, well... The islanders love to talk about anything or anyone. And as I'm a white woman living alone, well, I suppose I'm a good target, that's all. Mistress, ma'am. Well? You need me more? No, Mondo, you may go. It's bad night tonight. I keep watch. Go, Mondo. I go. <laughs> the 
natives are always uneasy in this rainy season. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Nesbitt, I'd like to explain the reason for our late visit tonight. Yes? We called on you to learn if you had ever heard of a young man here on the island named David Belmont. David Belmont? No, I'm afraid I don't know. Oh, oh I hope well, there's another have... plantation on the island. Have you looked for him there? Well, no, we came to you first. Well, I wish I could help you, but I'm afraid I can't. I see. Well, it looks like... What was that? It sounds as if it were in this house. No, it couldn't be. Now listen. That seems to come from under this room. Yeah, now, don't be alarmed. I'll find out what the disturbance is. Mondo? Mondo? Look! Over there at the window. Someone's looking in. That face is me over. Why, oh, you little fool. There's no one at the window. I... <laughs> Beg your pardon. But look, look, all of you. Do you see anyone there? No. No, I don't. Uh, I know. I, I saw someone. I... No, I did. Now, Betty, Betty, don't, please. You call mistress, ma'am? What was that noise, Mondo? I find Johnsy outside. I chased him away. But what was the noise beneath the house? Noise? Beneath house? Yes, those... those moons. That... that was hot. Rain make them restless tonight. Oh, oh of course, I... I'd forgotten in this rainy season we put the horses in the cellar under this room. I... Mistress, ma'am, that the pen to horses? Yes, yes. I, I'm afraid you must excuse me. Well, of course, sir. Uh, we were leaving anyway. Sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Nesbitt. It's quite all right, quite all right. Mistress, ma'am, that the pen to horses? Quick, yes, yes, Mondo. Good night, Miss Lane. Miss Fulton. Good night, and Good night. thank you anyway for... Well, that's where I come from. That's known as a bomb's rush. They almost pushed us out there, too. Lamont, did you hear that servant speak of John Lee? Yes. And the pilot on the boat spoke of John Lee, too. Yes, that's right. He said, ask John Lee. John Lee knows everything. Why do you think Mrs. Nesbitt was so upset about the horses? Because they're most unusual animals, Betty. What do you mean, Lamont? Well, do you remember those moans we heard in the house? I don't see how I could forget them. Why do you ask? That was the first time, Margot, I'd ever heard a horse moan with the vocal cords of a human being. I believe there's an inn just down the street. We can rest there before we go to the other plantation in the morning. Well, it's almost morning now, isn't it, Lamont? No, it's only two o'clock, Margo. I, I suppose it would be too much for us to go to that other plantation tonight. Well, it'd be quite a journey on a night like this. But I've got to know. I've got to know something about David too. If David isn't at the other plantation, I'd like to pay another visit to our friend, Mrs. Nesbitt. Why, Lamont? Oh, boy. Oh. And we'll leave the horses here. Well, someone's awake at the local inn. Lamont, why do you want to go back to the Nesbitt place? Well, for one thing, I'd like to learn more about those moans that came from her cellar. But they did sound human. They were human, Margot. What about this man, John? The one who knows everything. I very much enjoy meeting him, Margot. Well, uh, shall we go in? Coming, Betty? Yes. <laughs> Well, nightlife on St. Jude. Yeah. It seems to consist of one large bar and piano, two small tables, and some loaf of barflies. Well, at least we're out of the rain. Ooh, I don't know whether I want coffee or a clothes ringer. <laughs> Margo, I don't know how to thank you both for practically risking pneumonia just for my sake. Oh, it's all right, Betty. But here, let's not stand here and drip all over the floor. If we must make puddles, let's do it at the table. <laughs> What's going on over there? Oh, I don't know. There seems to be a crowd gathered around someone at the end of the bar. Watch him do this one. Eh? Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, Betty. Look, Lamont. That kind of attraction seems to be one of the natives. Yeah. Yeah. What's he up to? Nice clothes. Swaying back and forth in rhythm. Don't you know? I really think. Hey, 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 hey
Give us some more. That's not enough. Look. Money. Look, he, he's holding out his hat and they're putting money. Uh, money? More money? Right, man? That's more money. <laughs> Now he's talking in a native voice. And just a moment ago, he spoke like an Englishman. Let's find out about this. I uh, beg your pardon, sir. Yes? Uh, who is this man? Oh, just one of the natives. Yes, but his speech. Uh, first he spoke perfect English, and then he reverted to a guttural native voice. Uh, that's why we're throwing money in his hat. Now, this man is uh, sort of half-witted drunkard. He's a character around these parts because he's been gifted with a remarkable talent for uh, imitating any sound he hears. No, oh, I see. I've been told of such cases. Uh, it's rather uncanny when you first hear it. Yes, I should say it is. Now, uh, look, he's working up in another imitation. You see, he sings. Hey, I just stuck in here for a quick pick me up my door. For heaven's sake, tell my wife. <laughs> He just impersonated Clancy, the storekeeper. It was perfect, too. Isn't he amazing, Lamont? Money? Money for Jandy? Give him some money, Lamont. Money. Let's see what happens. Oh, here's some money. Uh, Jandy, uh, here's some money for you. Uh, Jandy, listen to me. Uh, can you talk like Mrs. Nesbitt, the plantation owner? Mrs. Nesbitt? Mrs. Nesbitt? Come on, Jandy. Uh, dear, uh, Lamont, he's closing his eyes. Uh, Listen closely to me, do you hear? It's Mrs. Nesbitt's voice. Exactly. From this night on, you're my slave. You must obey me. You have your orders. Now do as I command. Lamont, who do you suppose she was talking to? Quiet, Margot. He hasn't finished. Yes, mistress. Yes, mistress, I do as you command. Oh! Oh, no! Lamont! Betty! Betty, what's the trouble, Betty? Young lady, dear. Betty! Betty! Who, Betty? That man, Sunday. Why, he's a... Uh, where did he go? Uh, he just ran out. No, no, find him, find him. Well, what is it, Betty? Why do you want John Day? Because that, that, that voice, that voice that answered Mrs. Nesbitt was my fiancé, Jason. Mondo? Yes, Mistress, ma'am. What's that lantern you're carrying? Keep it dry? Yes. Mistress, ma'am. Rain and no rain. They're going out into the fields and work. Crop will be ruined if they don't. Swine, eating my food, carrying for them. Mondo, what's that, Landon? Yes, mistress, ma'am. All their false arrange have come, and they'll suffer for it. They'll be punished. We must hurry, Mondo. Drug will wear off. I don't give each another injection. No, oh, no. Oh. Mondo, no like to be around when you... Six needles in men's arms. Mondo, open that cellar door. Oh, no, no. No, no, make me go in with them. I said open that cellar door. No, mistress, ma'am. I, no, no, not be with my... Hey, Pat! I, I open, I open. Close it quickly. Quiet, you fools. Now listen to me, all of you. I don't expect you to know what I'm saying, but listen anyway. You understand that you're no longer men, you're swine in chains, bound together. Filthy cattle who labor in the cane fields under my command. For two days now it's rained. Because of that rain, you haven't worked. You've eaten my food, you've gotten my care of my crops running in the fields. Please, I can leave here. Mr. Quiet, Mondo. I only keep all of you alive because I save money using you to labor for me instead of native help. Mm. Fortunately, the silly superstition of zombies has kept all people away. And now you've dropped this rain, so I'm going to punish you for it. Before you go to the fields, you're going to feel the lash of a whip across your back. You'll see how the twilight is. Oh, no, 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 we can't. Something bad may happen. You idiot, come here. Come here. They do not obey. They must obey. Come here to me, I command you. <laughs> what was that? That voice. They no longer obey your commands, Mrs. Nesbitt. Who speak? Who talks to me? Has one of you broken the spell? I spoke, Mrs. Nesbitt, but I'm not one of your slaves. Who are you? Men call me a shadow. I see no one. He speaks. I see no one. I am standing right beside you, Mondor. No. 
No. No one beside me. My hypnotic powers make me invisible to your eyes. What do you want? Why are you here? I have come to free these men from the evil spell that you've cast upon them. No. No, you have no business here. Get out! Get out! <laughs> My power frightens you, Mrs. Nesbitt. Frightens you because it's far greater than yours. No. No, no one has greater power than I. Mondo, please this man. Listen for the location of his voice and seize him. Yes, Mondo. Come on, seize me. Hmm. If you dare. Oh. No, Mondo, no like voice. Mando, no one to be near, boy. Mando, run away from boy. Mando, Mando, come back here. <laughs> for all that you've done for Betty and me. Oh, don't mention it, David. Goodbye, Betty. Goodbye. And remember, we, we'll see you soon in the state. All, all right. right, Betty. Bye-bye. Watch your step, Mark. I'm right, getting into the launch. That's it. All aboard, sir. We'll go out to the ship now. Well, Lamont, I can't say that I'm sorry to be bidding farewell to the dreamy little isle of St. Jude. <laughs> that the authorities cleared the men of any responsibility for Mrs. Nesbitt's death. Well, it was easy to prove that she died of shock. A shock induced by fear of the living dead men that she herself had created. Yes. Well, I've settled one point in my mind anyway. Oh? What's that? The only zombies that I ever want to see again are the kind they serve in a nightclub in a long, cool grass. Oh, <laughs> 